As I mentioned in the last video, I've reached a milestone in my bionic hand project and now I need to work on a full version of the mechanical frame. So while I'm waiting for parts to arrive and components to print, I've decided to do a little side project so I could experiment with some new tools, materials and programs. I made this mechanised gauntlet using a 3D printed frame and for the armour plates I used a desktop vacuum forming machine called the Formbox which was generously sent to me by Make You. Vacuum forming is quite often used in animatronics and special effects but I've never had a chance to use one before so this project was a fun little experiment. In this video I'll talk a little bit about the mechanical design and the development process. So first off let's look at the mechanics of the design. It's actually very simple mechanically. The rotation comes from a high torque servo which I haphazardly converted into a continuous rotation servo by removing the pin on the final gear and clipping off the potentiometer. The servo drives a camshaft which runs along the entire length of the forearm and drives each one of these little brackets in sequence. Since the driving crank pins are all offset by around 70 degrees relative to the predecessor, the result is that all five of the brackets appear to move in a nice wave-like fashion. One thing I thought of while designing the gauntlet is that it wouldn't look as good if the motion was purely in the forearm and it would be a shame to limit wrist mobility so by having the final bracket mounted on a separate panel and having the crankshaft linked by a universal joint the rotation can continue across the wrist and some motion is still permitted. A final note about the mechanical design is that I decided to build it so it could easily be taken apart and put back together. Because fully assembled it's very cumbersome and it's nice to be able to pull off the plates for storage since they're very light and only held on with some tiny magnets. It also means it's really easy to make modifications like maybe some lighting or a smoke machine or something. You could maybe smuggle contraband with it. I'll give you the files for free in the description so you can stick whatever you want in there. All of the shell components were designed in ZBrush which is something that I've been trying to get to grips with lately. I went through a bit of a learning curve, particularly when it came to trying to figure out how to move around the workspace using a graphics tablet. The design I was going for was sort of like a vaguely bone-like or maybe crustacean slash deep sea creature design. I think it was an interesting experiment for a rank beginner, but as I developed my skills, I think I'd rather look into some hard surface modelling, and if I was to develop this project in the future, I'd much rather go with like a mecha slash cyborg slash cyberpunk kind of design. Another thing to note is that matter hackers were kind enough to send me some filament to try out, since in the past I've only really stuck to PLA and ABS. For most of the structural components I used their tough PLA, and I was quite surprised at its strength. As you might know if you've been around here for a while, I tend to use off the shelf parts when I want to make pivots and moving parts, rather than having two 3D printed surfaces in contact with each other. With this project I used a lot of contact between 3D printed parts and it went fine. Uh, the moving parts, excluding the crankshaft, were printed in PETG, which was also from Matter Hackers. Um, it's supposed to have better mechanical properties than PLA, which was very useful since the slot feature on the brackets was quite slender and weak. I've never printed in PETG before though, so I did go through some trial and error and had quite a bit of stringing, but overall the parts turned out really nice. In order to make sure the slot was strong enough in the brackets, I printed them upright so that the shape of the slot would be printed as a full layer. This meant that the arms of the bracket were printed with the layers running perpendicular to the arms, which I thought would have been a problem, but the PETG seems to have excellent layer adhesion, and the bracket was stiff enough to stay clamped onto the pivot points, yet still be free enough to allow easy rotation. Actually, on an earlier prototype of the brackets, I made it a little bit too wide, and I found that the form box actually doubled as a convenient way to warm up the 3D printed components, and let me bend them to shape. To make the armour plates, I took the ZBrush designs and printed them very quickly and low quality using some cheaper filament since I was up against it time wise for this project. Since I was only using one perimeter for the outer edge of the 3D prints and printing very quickly as I mentioned, I found that once I put the printed form in the vacuum forming machine, the result would have a really clear impression of the underlying infill. This is largely because the prints were so porous that the vacuum was able to suck air through them super effectively even suck in the outer perimeter of the print into the infill. Um, kind of like if you tried to vacuum form a sponge or something. Uh, I could have gone back and printed the parts more carefully, but instead I decided to experiment with the type of surface textures I could get by using different types of infilling curer. 
In the end, I went with the gyroid infill pattern since it looks quite organic and I like the pattern it makes on the surface of the plates. Another point to note was that I used quite a lot less than the recommended heating time for the styrene sheets because since the printed forms were so porous, as I mentioned, it was super easy for the vacuum to suck. The cardinal rule of vacuum forming is not to have any overhangs in your form design and one way to combat overhangs was to print with full support for any features less than vertical. I still did have some overhangs though, so the easiest way for me to get the forms out of the styrene was to use a scalpel and neaten up with some scissors. I glued the magnets into the forms and then I did a quick and dirty paint job with a base layer of cream and built up some darker spots in the crevices. Originally I didn't have a very clear idea in mind for the style I was going for, so I was going to have the entire design be white and I bought these white gloves which admittedly would have looked pretty boring, so my quick fix for that was to use some scuff cover to dye them brown. It was then pretty simple to just stick the mechanical base to the leather glove with some hot glue and attach all the armor plates. Although the magnets worked, I did find that the angle of the plates was a little bit of a problem as they were sort of colliding with each other, so I had to adjust the angle of the plates to stick out a little bit more. So all in all, I've explored a novel idea for a mechanised gauntlet and got to test out some new tools. The result is interesting, but as a concept or platform, I'd be very interested to see what other types of designs it could be useful for. As I mentioned, I'd really like to see what a more hard surface or cyberpunk design might look like, and obviously it'd be really easy to put a battery pack in there and take it to a comic con or something like that. As for the tools that I've tried out with this project, I am very happy with the Make You Form Box, and I expect I'll find lots of uses for it. I can't really complain about the functionality at all. It is a very simple machine with a simple job, but it does its job just as well as you could ask for. Um, I've had some complaints that the build area is too small for some people, but I think for the types of project that I do, it's more than ample, and if it was any bigger, it would probably cease to be a desktop machine. I'm also really happy with Matter Hacker's filament. In the past, I've only really ever used the cheapest, nastiest filament, so I need to do some more experimentation with it, but the tough PLA was strong enough to act as this relatively thin crankshaft, and the PETG, which I've actually never printed with before, was very tough and pretty low friction against the PLA too. Um, if you do want to try out some Matter Hackers filament, there's an affiliate link in the description, so if you buy some through there, I'll get a small percentage of the sale, which is obviously enormously helpful to me. And speaking of things which are enormously helpful to me, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons who support me with their generous donations and get access to my exclusive progress posts and Nilheim Mechatronics sticker packs. So thanks a lot guys, the next video will be back to the bionic hand, providing my servers arrive in time. See you all in the next video.